Vascular disease, the most common form of which is arteriosclerosis, is widespread and can be serious. It can lead to both stroke and abdominal aortic aneurysms. And if you are at risk, what steps can you take to prevent and to treat it? On this week's Health Talk, we'll be joined by a vascular surgeon with excellent advice for each and every one of us. So don't go away. We're up next. Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Mazur. And I'm Dr. Andrea Peterson. We have a very important topic for our show today, the prevention and treatment of stroke and abdominal aortic aneurysm. Our, doc, our guest is Dr. Ali Rizvi. He's a vascular surgeon with the Western Connecticut Medical Group. Ollie, welcome. Welcome Hi. to the show. Welcome to Connecticut. Uh, so good to have you. Absolutely. One of the new recruits to the Western Connecticut Health Network. It's really glad to, glad to have you. So we're talking about today about stroke and aneurysms. Uh, what do they have in common? The most important thing they have in common is the vascular surgeon. <laughs> uh, so the vascular surgeon is the only board certified specialist that's trained to diagnose and treat all spectrums of arterial and venous disease for the vascular patient. Uh, Maybe you could say just a couple of words about arterial yeah. and venous so people understand what we're talking about. Sure. So the arteries bring the blood away from the heart um, to the toes, to the, to the feet and the veins bring the blood back up to the heart to bring it to back oxygen so the blood can go back and feed the rest of the body. And also the and arteries the to the brain. To the brain, to the brain. To the brain. <laughs> of course. Which, so we need our feet and our brains, right? Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. And so it's interesting that some of the same risk factors for arteriosclerosis of the arteries going to the head uh, are the same as those for the creating aneurysms and having problems going to the legs. Oh, of course. So for all of these patients, anyone who's a smoker, who's a diabetic, uh, who, most importantly male, uh, should seek a vascular surgeon to look at the diseases of, uh, that, that can cause stroke and diseases that can cause abdominal aortic aneurysm. And maybe taking a step back, um, can you give us a little sense of the, the, the scope of the disease? Because these are both very important sure. diseases that can really cause a, a lot of um, uh, disability or even death for, for patients? Of course. So the stroke is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Um, most about three quarters of them, so about 75 to 80 percent of it, is caused by ischemic stroke, which means the blood is not getting to the brain. Um, and that's usually caused by a buildup of plaque. So if the artery has buildup of cholesterol plaque, it prevents the blood from going to the brain. It's usually the artery located here in the neck or on this side of the neck. Um, and those are, that's where we usually go and treat. And, and how, how about the, the problem with abdominal or aortic aneurysm? Why, why is that a risk factor sure. and, and how do people get that? Yeah, sure, so abdominal aortic aneurysm is, so aneurysm anywhere, any artery is ballooning of the artery. So let's say an artery is supposed to be this big. Picture a balloon, as the balloon gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the balloon can just burst. Yeah, the old days of the old, uh, uh, inner tube tires. I don't think people yeah. remember it, but uh, yeah. you know, the, where part of the tire would weaken and you get a ballooning of the wall yeah. and it's a weakening of the wall. And I guess, you know, there are several problems then because the, the worst of which is that can rupture. Of course. And you, it ruptures, you really have very few moments to, to live. Right. Uh, and that's why you really need to detect these early or early enough and repair them if they're there. Sure. So you detect them early enough, which means anyone who's a smoker, over the age of 65, uh, male, uh, should be screened for an abdominal aortic aneurysm. The way you're screened is with an ultrasound probe on your belly, and you check with the ultrasound, see if there is ballooning of the vessel. It's a very simple. Now, we have some, right. uh, some pictures, I think, that will go over some of the risk factors and show you sure. at least some schematics. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, some schematics. So, here are the risk factors. Do you want to go through, through those with us? So history of smoking, uh, advanced age, high blood pressure, excess weight, um, family heart history of uh, peripheral arterial disease and high cholesterol. These are all risk factors for stroke and aneurysm. Diabetes actually happens to be one of those things for some one reason or another is protective against abdominal aortic aneurysm. So it's sort of reverse for diabetes, but everything else is still a stroke. And it's a, it, it, for the uh, aneurysm, uh, males have a much greater risk, men, than women. Of course. And, uh, the, if you're a non-smoker, you almost don't see them even in men. Isn't that true? You're absolutely right. So smokers, just to take an instance, smoke, anyone who smoked about half a pack per day, 
for a total of 10 years, so about five pack per day per year for a year history, it's more than two times the risk of a general population. Very important also is if you have a family history, if you have a male relative uh, who's in aneurysm, somebody with a family history has about 12 times the risk of abdominal aortic aneurysm. Wow. So family That's history comes in uh, very significantly. I know people always think of smoking and lung cancer. Okay. Yeah. Another example where smoking we leads to bad diseases. We talk a lot about smoking on this, uh, on this show and, and all the bad consequences that smoking can, yeah. Yeah. can have. And should former smokers be screened as well or only active so smokers? So it's former smokers, anyone who's ever smoked half a pack per day. There's any man. Who's and any man who's ever smoked half a pack per day uh, for about 10 years. So more than 100 cigarettes. Even, uh, even females, there's some indications that if women who smoke uh, s severe enough that they can be screened. So as women well. aren't completely off the hook. No, they're not completely and off the hook. Let's again bring up the pictures that we have so we can uh, show our viewers at home exactly what we're talking about anatomically because we have a couple of pictures to look at the carotid arteries that develop sure. arteriosclerosis mm -hmm. as well as the. So and take us through go. this here. So this is, as I was mentioning earlier, this is where the plaque comes in. So you see the plaque on the lower right hand corner of the screen? That's the, an that's the artery in the neck where the plaque is. So it's and the plaque is that yellow, yellow stuff, stuff that looks sort of like fat. A normal artery or a clean artery would be towards the top of the screen and then a plaque filled artery would be in the uh, lower part. And that's as if we're looking inside the artery. So this is looking on the inside of the artery. This is something, if blood goes through, it can go through smoothly through the healthy artery. In the normal artery, in the black plaque buildup artery, it's not able to go through as smoothly. And that's where the stroke comes in because the blood is not getting there as much as you need. And sometimes the plaque can chip off and shoot a little embolus, which means it's shooting off little particles yeah. into the brain. That's where the ischemic or the lack of blood supply stroke and comes people from. People may have so even heard of TIAs or TIAs. transient ischemic attack. Those are those little mini pieces strokes. of plaque, mini strokes that sure. are coming off. That. And they get lodged in smaller blood vessels in the brain and then they can cause the damage there. And maybe we can bring up the next picture, which is uh, sort of the other end of the body. And uh, this is the abdominal aortic aneurysm. Correct. So abdominal aortic aneurysm, about 200,000 patients are diagnosed with these aneurysms uh, annually in the U.S. alone. Uh, the average size of, just to put it into perspective, is about two centimeters. The average size of the aorta? Uh, uh, average size of the aorta. which That's means that main tube going down through the middle of the body there. The big blood vessel coming from the heart and providing all the organs and the legs and the brain, everything. Right. Um, if it gets to five centimeters, the risk of a rupture every year is about five to ten percent. And that's what we're seeing on the right in the square yes. there is actually an aneurysm and the way the aorta gets distorted. And that's also filled with plaque and and garbage, it's, which is not good for you. It's filled with plaque and garbage, but again, the most important thing is the size of its growth, how fast it's growing, and whether or not, uh, if it's more than five centimeters. If more than five centimeters, the risk of rupture goes up tremendously high. Uh, at that point, uh, the treatment is uh, indicated. Let me ask you, uh, you talked about screening, and you can look at the carotid artery with ultrasound, Correct. similar to the way you can look at the abdominal yes. aorta. There are a lot of ads on TV about going in for screening and you pay $150 and they'd screen you for everything. Is that something that you recommend, uh, that you recommend after discussion with doctors or should it be d done differently? How, so do you, how, do you, yeah, how do you react to that? Of course, so I mean it's a very interesting question because most of the patients we see as a vascular surgeon are patients who've sort of more been diagnosed. But on the flip side, if the patient does have, uh, is worried about screening, the most important thing is to know about family history and speak to your medical doctor the primary care medical doctor to go over all the risk factors. And the best way is still managing those risk factors. So if you're a smoker, you have to be comprehensive. This is where vascular surgeons come in as well. We're not just surgeons who operate. We also offer com comprehensive uh, therapy from, for smoking cessation, for medical management of diseases, uh, as well as making sure the patient's high blood pressure and diabetes are under control. And once they're all controlled, all these risk factors sort of, uh, we can sort of tease them out. I think that's really uh, that's really important. And so, uh, like many things we talk about on this show, it really takes a, a team to take care of the individual patient. So you're working in conjunction with the patient's primary care doctor to take care of the whole patient. Absolutely, absolutely. So the whole patient is the, is more important than just the sum of its parts. So you can't just say anyone who's 55 or 65 should get this get this screening. No, it has to be communication with the medical doctor. But if you do have these risk factors, it's always it's always important to discuss if you need to see a vascular surgeon. I think it's very important. So maybe just to review that, no smoking. No smoking. Control your blood pressure. Control your blood, yep. And control your cholesterol. Correct, and diabetes. And, and diabetes. diabetes. You control your diabetes as well. So hemoglobin less than, uh, hemoglobin A1C less than 7% is what's indicated. 
uh, for vascular uh, optimization. So, so let's now take it the next step since we only have a few minutes left. And somebody comes in, let's start with the stroke. Somebody has arterial sclerosis and partial narrowing. Uh, maybe they, they have, not to get into detail, maybe they've had a TIA or mini stroke. Sure. They've got significant narrowing, 85 or 90 percent. How do you fix that? You're, so, you're the fixer too. Not only do you help prevent, absolutely. but you fix it. Absolutely. So, so TIAs means they're, they're having weakness in the arm or the leg to last less than 24 hours, or the vision changes, and that vision changes as resolved. Uh, or they had slurry speech. If you have any of those things, you have to come to the emergency room immediately. But let's say you have those, and you have an ultrasound of the neck arteries, which shows that there's, there's, there's uh, plaque buildup about 80%. If that's the case, if it's more than 50% to 80% and you have these diseases, uh, the first step is making sure your medical therapy is all okay. You're not smoking anymore. And like I said, the diabetes and the, the blood glucose and the blood pressure is all controlled. And you're on aspirin. The next step is we can do, we can do minimally invasive or maximally invasive procedures. One of the procedures we offer is the carotid endarterectomy. It's been around for about 50, 60 years. It used to be a long incision along the entire course of the neck. Now it's about a two centimeter incision at the location oh, of- About one inch. About a one inch incision <laughs> at the, at the, on top of the plaque. We figure, figure, find the plaque, take it out, and if the artery is like this, it was narrowed, we open it up and put a little covering on top of it. It sounds real simple, does it? But it's That's it. not <laughs> as simple as it sounds, though, because there's a risk of stroke from the surgery itself, isn't Of course. There? So we're try the goal is to try to prevent the stroke, but the risk of the stroke is about 1% to 3%. Um, so you want to be under 1% uh, of the stroke, but usually, it's usually it's usually a fairly safe procedure. It's been standardized over the last 50, 60 years. And again, we only have a couple of minutes left. Say something about the abdominal aortic aneurysm, because the treatment of that has really sure. changed in the past five or 10 years. Of course, so the, the treatment of an abdominal aortic aneurysm it used to be a big incision all the way down your belly, from your chest to the groin, um, or from the side of, of the flank. Uh, with patients had to stay for about a week or so in the hospital, uh, then it would be sick, they'd have a tube. So you'd open membrane. it up and you'd take the whole aneurysm out and replace right. it with a graft. Yeah, so the picture you saw before with the bulging of the aorta, we physically take that out and suture in a cloth into it, into place, into the aorta. A false tube. False tube into the aorta to make sure that the blood is now going through the proper vessels. The new way is, uh, is a groin puncture in one or two groins, in the, and, uh, you know, and we put a stent graft, which is a metal, covered by fabric. And we put that in, and the patients can go home within the same day or the next day. So this is really putting a new lining inside the, the, the aneurysm, yes. and does that, that takes the pressure off the walls so, if you do it well? Yeah, so if it's the balloons like this, and you put in a little lining in the middle, it's a little lining tube in the middle that's taking the pressure off the balloon so the balloon doesn't have a chance to burst. Well, why isn't that always done? That's not always done because of technical uh, challenges that we can face. Sometimes, the v so for it to work, you have to have enough, you have to have good anatomy, which is something we can discuss as a vascular surgeon, which means you have to have your kidney arteries have to be a certain place. If they're not a certain place, you're not a good candidate. Mm -hmm. If your vessels that feed your intestines aren't in a good place, you're not a good candidate. So they're all different little technical challenges. You have to have no arteriosclerosis in the, the legs, too? Yeah, or yeah you, you can have some. You can have some. Actually, if, even if you have it, we can treat it because we're just putting a oh, stent graft over it. So if there's some blockage, we can actually sometimes open it up as well. But so like everything else, it's really about the individual person and assessing what's best for them. Absolutely. And uh, and that's, that's such an important message. And I'm sorry, we've run out of time. It's this has been such an important <laughs> show. Appreciate all the important information. Um, we'd like to thank very much Dr. Ali Rizvi for joining us on Health Talk today. So if you have any comments or questions for Andrew and me, please email us at healthtalk at wchn.org. Thanks so much for watching. And Be well and don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs>